two things about that. It's important for everybody to understand the two different issues. One is, are they going to do the grand bargain? And I think we all agree they're going to do the grand bargain. We don't know exactly what's in it. We, we will have disagreements about that. I, I think, think it's going to look very different from the one you have in your head right now. Okay, I a massive disagreement with Michael on that. I think it'll look exactly like the one I have in my head or worse. Okay, and the one I have in my head is not something I just go oh, like, oh, look at that. Here, I'll snatch it and put it in my head. No, I read it. <laughs> oh, well, and, it and I didn't read it from the Republicans. I read it from Obama. He, he has said it a million times. I want it to be three to one, three to one, three to one. That's our best case scenario. That's before the negotiations began. And you know how much he sucks at negotiations. That's because he wants to suck at it. That's because I think he's fundamentally conservative. Okay, so we have a disagreement on that. Disagreement number two is when it's going to happen. That's a topic you just introduced. It's going to happen during the lame duck session. And I'm, I'll put money on it with you. Let's okay. put money. We haven't made a bet. Okay, $20. Uh, a while, $20. Okay, um, God bless. Okay. okay, so that's $20 and burning a hole in my pocket. I'm going to go spend it on lunch. I don't today. know what to do. Okay. With it. Where's my now, $20? Okay, now, and I'll tell you why. Because the Republicans know they're cornered. They, they have every disadvantage in the world here. The only advantage they have is that the guy they're negotiating with actually agrees with them. Okay, so they can't wait to make a deal. If the Bush tax cuts expire, they have no leverage. And they know that. That's why you, they were saying before the election, everybody, uh, McConnell, Cornyn, Bader, were like, well, I mean, we're going we're gonna, we're, I mean, to sit down. And we, I mean, don't worry about the pledges about we're never going to raise taxes or anything like that. They were sending smoke signal after smoke signal. We're going to take the grand bargain. You win. We're going to take it. That was before the election. Then they got there asking. They're going to take it. And Obama, he's dying, dying to do the grand okay. bargain. The minute it's on the table. In fact, here, let me show you the last part. This was supposed to be a tough guy thing. But in reality, it actually shows exactly what Obama wants to do. Let's watch the last part of the fiscal cliff. Let's yeah. extend the middle class tax cuts right now. Let's do that right now. That one step. That one step would give millions of families, 98% of Americans and 97% of small businesses, the certainty that they need going into the new year. In fact, the Senate has already passed a bill doing exactly this. So all we need is action from the House. And I've got the pen ready to sign the bill right away. I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to do it. Well, that's exactly what I'm afraid of. Okay, he's ready to do it. He's going to do it in the lame duck session. And well, he's it, talking about one thing and one thing only. He 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 separated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He separated them. So this will be resolved quickly because the lame duck session well, I, ends. I, I, in, let in, me just clarify our bet. I I think he's going to do. I think he's going to bifurcate it, take it away from uh, the entire uh, set of tax cuts, and I think that he's going to take the. The Republicans uh, won't agree to. to I, I think he's going to be able to do that. Okay, I do think to I, do you want to make a third bet? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll make that. I'll make that bet. I thought we only have one. Okay, all right, all right. So, Jeff. two areas that that we might be correctly reading what he's saying, or we might not be, is one we were getting down on him for saying, you know, that I'm I'm not everything's wedded. I'm not wedded to every detail. So he, that could be an indication that he's willing to to significantly change uh, on what we consider to be core principles in this deal, or it could simply be Obama in his first major speech on this issue that he knows every everybody's going to cover being conciliatory and appearing to be reasonable and that might or might not line up with how he actually negotiates once we get to the negotiation. Well, that's, that's where Jank, no, is, I'm not Jank saying, has reason to have no, the no, position he has that, in this case. Then my second point, my second that's point. That's what happened last time. Your, your understanding of how the grand bargain is going to go is based off of previous negotiations, the way things have been talked about. But back then, the Democrats also thought they were going to do worse in this election. They didn't think they were going to pick up Senate seats. They didn't th think they no. were going to pick up House seats. No. They did so, better than expected. John, those are would seem to be fair points, but no, that 90% of my position is based on what Obama wants to do. It's not about political leverage. In fact, here, let me tell well, also you. Also, it's what he ran on right. and won, so yeah. there's, there's something to be said for that. I mean, he ran on the progressive side of it. He uh, didn't say, like, for example, he, corporate he, tax he cuts. He has been he's saying gonna, throughout this campaign, though, that he's the, okay, the grand bargain. Okay, you know what? Place. Now that you got me started on that, real quick. Yeah. Corporate tax cuts, right? So he's mentioned a couple times that he's going to lower, lower taxes on corporations. Did he run on that? No, hell no. Did he ever do a stump speech where he's like, hey, corporations are people, my friend. I'm going to lower their taxes. He didn't say that because he knows it's unpopular, but he knows he loves it and wants to do it anyway. And by the way, he didn't raise a billion dollars accidentally. Okay, what? And that wasn't all small donors. There was a lot of corporate money in there. Weird that he, just like the Republicans, want to give them a break. So now, if he, President Obama wanted to be strong on this issue, here are his advantages. Okay, He just won the election. 
on this message is I'm, of, I'm gonna raise taxes on the rich, right? So huge advantage right there. So he can say mandate, he can say anything he likes. Number two, he has no political pressure, right? Uh, because he's not up for re-election. The Republicans are up for re-election in two years and they just got their ass kicked, right? So if they know anything about politics, the Republicans would be in a panic. So Obama has a second huge advantage there, third advantage. He can make the GOP look more unreasonable if they obstruct again. Now that was one of their big problems in the yeah. election. They're obstructionists, right? And they're unreasonable and they won't compromise. If President Obama comes in and says, look, I got the mandate of the people and here I am offering you a three to one deal, whatever it is that he offers them, he can get whatever he wants because the Republicans cannot afford to look unreasonable again. Yeah. Point number three. Point number four, doing nothing actually leads to favorable results. The taxes go up if you do nothing, okay? And spending cuts are not as bad if you do nothing. But Those money. are progressive positions, right? So that is again to your advantage. And then you can come back and say, hey, we all agree to middle class tax cuts, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna introduce that. You wanna vote against the Republicans? Have at it, Hoss. And that's right? why I think he's waiting for a new Congress. Yeah, no. If he cared to win, he would be waiting for a new. No, Congress. I think he's waiting. That's for our a new fundamental Congress. disagreement. He I, doesn't want to win. I think he wants to win. Okay. I think yeah, that's that all right. Our he doesn't want to win on policy. He wants to win on politics. That's why he ran a great campaign. That's why you can't call him weak, right? Because if when he wants to win, he brings out a lead pipe and a blowtorch, as we just saw in the yeah, campaign. That's a candidate okay. and a president. Those are right. two different things. And so. then finally, the fifth point is the polls are on his side. You know, if you say cut Medicare, people say hell no. Cut Social Security, hell no. Cut Medicaid, hell no. Okay, raise taxes on the rich, hell yes. In fact, raise taxes period got 60% in an exit poll of Americans saying raise them, raise them, raise them. So he's got every advantage in the world. So I tell you all that as you'll get to see if I'm right and he cuts a grand bargain that is against all these progressive principles, he cuts, and, and on top of that he does it quickly in the lame duck session, when he has less leverage, less Democratic senators, less Democratic congressmen, etc., you'll know that he wanted to do the conservative position all along. Now, can you agree with me on that? Uh, if all of those things happen, I, yeah, yeah, but I don't agree that any of the that a lot right, of those things because are I want happen. I don't yeah. want to just have a yeah. a pundit disagreement here. Mm -hmm. I want the audience to be able to tell when the next set of events happen, what drove it. What, can I add another thing that's driving it? Again, like I just want to talk about some of the info that I've been reading about what will happen if we go off the fiscal cliff or whatever. And, I'm, and this is, uh, I'm not saying my opinion on whether or not we should, I'm just saying the analysis that I'm reading. And this, is, this isn't like the, the CBO estimates of how tax cuts will affect jobs. They're, they're talking about the, the military cuts, particularly. They say that these cuts, the money that goes to these contractors, which actually would be cut, and you can understand why jobs would be lost as a result of that, we might lose 400,000 jobs. Now, Obama doesn't necessarily care, although he doesn't want that to be attributed to him, but what about the dozens of congressmen that are in the districts where those jobs would be lost? He doesn't want Democratic congressmen having ads run against him in the midterm elections saying that all these jobs are lost. So that doesn't mean that I wouldn't do it. I think we, we spend uh, way but, too but much John, on the military. That, but he the, is thinking about that as well. No, 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 I know. But that is the bullshit excuse I hear every single time. Oh, uh, we got to worry about the next elections. So hence, you know, we need to sell out the Republicans. But wait a minute, you just got elected on progressive positions. So why would you have to worry about being more conservative to win the next elections? That's the most counterfactual, counterintuitive thing you've ever heard. But that's the excuse every time because the reality is, and let's keep it real, they take giant corporate money. They take giant money from rich folks, the powerful, the establishment, the Democrats do. That's why they want to win in politics, but when it comes to policy, their job is to lay down and say there was nothing we could do. We had to agree with the Republicans. You see, we had an election coming up in like 17 and a half years, <laughs> which you know we could only win by doing the exact opposite of what we just did to win these elections. It makes no sense. The only way that it makes sense is when you realize what their actual objective is, which is to cater to the same exact donors that the Republicans have, and that led them to win this election in the first place. I think, uh, yeah, well, I, your arguments are sound on that, on everything you just said. I, why I think they're going to wait is I want to see, they want to see how the new leadership is going to be. President Obama has a friend named Bill Clinton that he didn't have last time in terms of consulting, in terms of talking to him. I think Bill Clinton has chimed in on this over and over with the president, according to, to both reporters who I spoke to, who uh, at, uh, you know, post-convention uh, in, uh, in, in uh, Charlotte, and people, you know, news reports and stories that have come out since then. I think that 
without question, it's not going to look like what you think it looks like right now. All right. Uh, and that's where I would put my money and my, my opinions. All right, so let's hope you're right.